Welcome back, Fanch1. Are you ready for some football? We are eight days away from the start of the NFL season. Today, we are here to give our NFC division winners before things kick off in Kansas City next week. I'm Corey, AFC team fan. And I'm Brendan, logging into FanDuel, and this is RV from the Bench. Before we get started, if you're not already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you never miss any one of the new episodes. Also, if you could please do us the favor, if you like what you see or hear, please don't forget to smash that like button. Come on! Smash it for us. It's free. It's free for you. It's free for us. It helps out the channel a lot more than you probably think. Thank you. Ooh, buddy. Uh, Ooh. This is the time, man. This is the time. <laughs> I just put out on my uh, patio, or not my patio, my uh, my front doorstep the other day, my official It's Time uh, doormat, Faith Family Football. So, nice. yeah, now, <laughs> we freaking ready, bro. NFL is here. Right. It's around the corner, like we talked about at the beginning, eight days away. Are you excited, man? Dude, I'm super stoked because, like, low key, anything can happen. Like, 19 out of 21 years, the last 19 out of 21 of the last years, a team from last has gone to first. So, anything can happen. Our teams are alive. I'm not mine because I have the Niners <laughs> in my division, but on, I believe man. in you. I'll take it. I'll take it for you. But not the night. It's, the, I mean, unless everybody yeah. on the Niners gets hurt. Like, yeah, <laughs> that right, right. and we even got the Rams too. People are thinking they might even take the division, but I understand the the principle of what you're saying, which is why some, maybe not the NFC West, but some will we will see that we for sure will see that. So, uh, what we're gonna do here in this episode, we're gonna break down the NFC. Catch us in the next episode. We're gonna drop tomorrow or the next day or so um, for the AFC. But today we are starting in the NFC. Corey, oh, let's start oh, oh. with the North. Uh, one of those. Uh, one of the divisions to represent in the nfc title game last year obviously with the lions give us uh, kind of your rundown quick order of one two three four and then why i mean most of it's going to be why who's winning the division but you know just kind of basically give us a rundown of why yeah for sure so yeah lions nfc north who would have thought we'd be talking about the Lions have a chance to win back-to-back division titles <laughs> like in <laughs> our me. lifetime i'll raise my hand it's yeah. not me yeah <laughs> yeah, it's it's weird. Um, but it is it is a it is a thing. I, I actually kind of see them having a, another good year and winning the division. Uh, it might be a close battle come down to the wire with uh, Green Bay. I think that Green Bay is, you know, I don't know. They're going to build on that momentum from last year and maybe still get another wild card spot. Jordan Love is still very young, obviously. Yeah. Um, but they've signed him up. He's not going anywhere. They. It's, it's weird how Green Bay does that with quarterbacks. I don't like. Why does anybody else do that? Why does anybody else follow that that situation? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. The only thing that the caveat to that is, I think they waited a little too long on Rodgers. Now, maybe that was because yeah. Love wasn't ready, and also they paid Love after like eight games. So that's the only part I'm nervous about. Now, if he pans okay. out, then I'm with you. But if not, he he played like a half a season and did good. What if what if he sucks now? Now, now he just lied yeah, over for seasons. But but okay. other than that, the principle of their formula. I mean, if he pans out, that's three generational great quarterbacks in a row. Like, yeah, it's like four years worth of quarterbacking, like not even thought about. It's just yeah, not even th- yeah. So it's, it's a great, it's a great principle to start with for sure. We'll see though. With love, yeah. yeah. All right. So then down the rest of the line, I have I actually have the Bears finishing in third this year. I think with Caleb Williams, obviously there's a lot of excitement and anticipation of what he's going to be this year. I think bringing in uh, what did they bring? Keenan Allen, and then they already had uh, the guy they got from yeah. Carolina the year before. Thank you. I couldn't think of his name. And then they drafted a Dunze. They, I mean, they have weapons all over the place for him. So if any young rookie quarterback has ever been set up for not to fail at all, it's him in Chicago. But the problem is it's Chicago, so that's a little worrisome. So, yeah. but I still have them. They, I mean, they won seven games last year without him. The only reason they ended up with the pick is because of the Carolina trade. So I think they're going to win probably another game or two, maybe eight or nine. But I don't think they're going to be quite good enough to get past the Packers and Lions in the division. And then I have the Vikings at the bottom. I think we obviously feel bad for J.J. McCarthy with his knee yeah. uh, before the season starts, so there's really no chance. So it's on Sam Darnold, and good luck, Justin Jefferson. I feel bad for you. I don't think it's going to be quite the year you are hoping for with Sam Darnold, but I could be wrong. But I think Minnesota is kind of in that rebuilding era, and maybe by being bad this year – with McCarthy out, they get another top five pick. They can get another feature piece to build, and then McCarthy comes back, and they can really kind of you know springboard into the future from there. But that's how I see the NFC North lining up. Okay, that's pretty good. Before I give mine, I want to add Carolina, bro. Not only did they not draft <laughs> C.J. Stroud, then they gave up the pick to get Caleb Wood. Like, bro, that's <laughs> that's rough, not dude. Only- that is. Um- 
on top of that, the owner apparently was the one who was, I want Bryce Young. And most of the scouts in the organization were like, nah, I think Stroud's better. And he's like, nah, I want, I want Bryce Young. I'm going Bryce Young. So like, who knows what could have happened if he would have listened to his people that he pays to do a job. I don't know. It's crazy. Yeah. They Martin wouldn't Rain be as, out. yeah, yes, yeah, seriously. Right. They wouldn't be <laughs> as bent out of shape knowing Caleb went with their pick, right? Uh, because yeah. Stroud probably would have been better. Um, but yeah, it, that's rough. That's rough. So, okay. Let me break mine down. NFC North. No. I've got it shaping out a little bit different. Very similar, but a little bit different. I know that's kind of contradictory. It can't be very <laughs> similar and different. But I have uh, the second half. I'm switching it up, man. Uh, I know the Lions are favorite to win this, but I just can't run with favorites. You know what I mean? And I, I don't think most people have the Packers that far behind Detroit. So that's why I kind of have them making the jump. The Lions should and probably be just as good as they were last year if not better, right, because they've only improved and they have yeah. chemistry together. Um, but something about a Matt LaFleur-led offense makes me kind of believe in the Packers. Um, when there was all this weirdness around Aaron Rodgers and he wasn't putting up MVP numbers, they were still winning positive number of games. They squeaked into the playoffs, albeit they lost. Um, but or, or maybe that was a wild card playoff game or something like that. But but either way, they were always relevant, even with an aging Rodgers and a brand new love. He, something about what he does is just great. And because they have a pretty competent quarterback from what we believe and a, a slew of weapons to throw to, um, I think he squeaks out the division by a game or maybe even like a tiebreaker, right? Like maybe they win the head to head and that's why they tie and then they're up like that. So I think it's going to be really close. Gotcha. But I'm going Packers, Lions. Then I'm with you on Bears Vikings. I, I do think Chicago is going to be a nightmare for most teams, but I just don't know if it's going to be ready to take over this division because it's already a good division, right? If 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 the yeah. Bears were playing in maybe the NFC Europe, South, <laughs> the NFC South, right, instead of the NFC North, then then I would honestly I might pick them to win it. But these are two really good teams and one that was just there last year. Actually, the Packers were kind of just there last year, making it yeah. to. Um, San Francisco and almost winning that game. Uh, so I think Chicago will be a nightmare, but not quite ready. Mini, obviously, they lost JJ. They um, have to rely on Darnold, like you mentioned. They won't be bad, but they won't be good. So um, Packers, Lions, Bears, Vikes. All right. Nice. So a little different, but not too far off. Not too far off. Yeah. Yeah. So let's move to the NFC South, that oh, terrible yeah. that terrible uh, division we were just mentioning. This one will be short. It's funny because as we norm- – Corey and I fill these out separately, so we don't really look at what each person's doing to see like, oh, what did he say about this or what did he say about that. But when I <laughs> scrolled through like our sheet where we kind of put notes, this is the shortest section of all of the <laughs> divisions that we cover. We don't really have much to say, so let's get right to it, okay? Oh, wow. um, yeah. The Bucks took this division last year barely. Uh, they literally won it on the last game of the year. And it was a tie uh, before that, so they were really close to not getting it. I don't think they repeat. Um, I, I'm not going with them this year. I'm thinking that the resurgent Falcons, with obviously the injection of Kirk Cousins into this pretty good and talented offense with an already talented defense, I think they're going to be pretty good. Um, it was already a, a race to the top of the worst division in football last year, and Atlanta barely missed it. Um, having a top 10 Okay, let me put it this way. A possibly top 10 quarterback on any given Sunday, which is what Kirk Cousins was pre-injury. Okay, obviously we don't know post-injury. So as long as Kirk's healthy, I say they take it. Uh, My analysis on the rest of the division. The Bucs are okay. The Saints should fire their coach fairly soon. And Carolina is, well, Carolina. Back to you, Corey. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty much it. I mean, Falcons, Bucks, Saints, Panthers is how I have this kind of rolling out. But, um it's really just going to be like the top two teams looking at what they're doing. Yeah. No. And uh, actually it's hard to argue with you because I have the same teams in the same order as you do for the NFC South. It's like you talked about, I think with Kirk cousins, if he's healthy with Bajon Robinson, Kyle Pitts, Drake London, like they've got a lot of weapons there for him to play with and, and have a big uh, explosive year. Uh, last year, the defense was kind of like in the middle of the pack as far as the league rankings and now bringing in Raheem Morris, good, uh, who's against actually the pass. They're good. Uh, oh, second run that they killed them. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, Raheem Morris is coming in. He's from uh, from the LA Rams and having won a Super Bowl with them as a defensive coordinator. And not that he has Aaron Donald on the Falcons, but you know, scheme wise and building a defense, I think is his specialty. And we'll be able to hopefully make them at least get closer to maybe like a top ten defense, maybe eight, nine, ten at the top of it, but give them some more opportunities to win some games. And I think you know, if they won seven or eight games last year with Desmond Ritter at quarterback, and if Who they just played got somebody cut else, from being third string for the Cardinals, by the way, just yeah, got cut so from being third string. 
for some tells context. you all you need to know about Atlanta season <laughs> last year. So, uh, and, exactly. and then worst case, if for some reason, you know, it doesn't work out with cousins, you still got Michael Penix that you drafted. So maybe that'll pan out if it doesn't with, mm-hmm. with cousins. So I think there's a lot to build with there in Atlanta. And I'm with you about Buccaneers are the same team. Baker Mayfield, Mike Evans, their defense is kind of worse. But uh, Saints are just and Derek Carr. I don't even know if he's still good anymore. And the Panthers, like you said, are the Panthers. And as long as Teppin, I think is his last name, who owns that team, they're going to be horrible. Yeah, so David good luck. Tepper. Or Tepper. Yeah, good Tepper. Luck. Yeah. Tepper, there you go. I think that's right. <clears throat> yeah, it's not looking great in Carolina. But, yeah, I'm with you on, on all that's the rest right. of them. Um, no, I, I, I'm telling you how bad it is. The Cardinals are only carrying two quarterbacks. Like, it's not like it was a battle for third. Oh. They just said, never mind, we don't even need a third. Thanks, Desmond. But no, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I just wanted to add the context. It's not like, oh, Ooh. it was a battle and he lost for third. No, no, no. They said, fine, we'll take two. Mind you, with yeah. a Kyler Murray that constantly gets hurt every year. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know who you guys need to call? You need to call Cleveland. I think they kept all three of those guys. They have, like, four quarterbacks right now trying to figure out what the hell they're doing. I'll take like, a DTR Watson. or the other guy. Yeah, DTR is there. There you go. Hey. I'll take that guy. He's young. Why not? He actually didn't look yeah. terrible for like a couple of no, snaps. And as a third like stringer, who cares? That's what I'm saying. So, uh, so yeah, that's that's our NFC South. Pretty pretty same. And uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think any much. Falcons might win a home playoff game, their first one, depending on who their matchup is against. Yeah, but other than that, yeah. I, don't, I don't see them really even doing anything. They'll take the division and, and lose at home. <laughs> yep, that's pretty much what I expect to happen. Yeah. So, all right, moving on from north to south, we are going. East Coast, least Coast, NFC East. Ooh, ooh. Um, I know you're a gigantic Cowboys fan. Um, oh yeah, so... <laughs> yes, ever. <laughs> so how do you have this division shaken out, man? Uh, I'm gonna spell one word: E A G L E S. Eagles. I have the Eagles coming back and getting this division this year. I think they're gonna come back. I mean, even though they faltered into the playoffs last year, they still made the playoffs like, amid all the controversy in the locker room, possibly. But I think this year they come out fresh. Uh, you know, no Kelsey at center anymore, which is going to be a big change for them and hurts. Uh, but I think they'll be fine. I think the offense is still loaded. Um, I think that yeah, bringing, um, who did they bring back from, uh, from Detroit, the defensive back? Uh, I can't think of his name. Gardner Johnson. Gardner, right? CJ Gardner Johnson. So, Sauce so he's Gardner. back. It's I think another different Gardner. Sauce is in yeah, different Gardner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I think it helps solidify the back end, which was Philly's biggest issue last year. We talked about it last year when they brought in Kevin Byer to the deadline from Tennessee. It might help they things. They also drafted the two top and, corners in the fucking draft too. Okay, so they went all in on the defense, so they should be improved there. Um, I think, again, I, I don't remember if it's 18 or 19 years in a row that not one team has won this division back-to-back. Like 20, so Cowboys 23 now or some shit like that? Yeah. Okay, even longer. So Cowboys are not going to win it. I think they'll drop down to second. Um, I just I don't know. With the DAC controversy and the contract, does that become a distraction if it's not already? Because C.D. Land's been paid now. You haven't paid uh, Michael Parsons yet. Like, There's a lot going on in Dallas, so I think that'll kind of – get in the way. Then it's going to be the commanders at third. I think they're going to improve. I think Jaden Daniels, you know, new coach with Dan Quinn, new ownership, new vibe. It's not the Dan Schneider era anymore. Like we've kind of gotten rid of all that. I think they're going to be better. I don't think they're going to win the division or even make a wild card, but if they can win like six or seven games with Jaden Daniels as a rookie quarterback. I think it's a step in the right direction for them. And the giants are, it's kind of like the Panthers. Like, I don't know what's going on over there. Daniel Jones isn't any good. Do they go back to DeVito at the backup from that's right. Hey, that's the last hey Tommy. Tommy, get hey, out there. Yeah, you know, I just, I just, I don't know. Oh, you got no Saquon Barkley. He's going to come into town when he's, when they play Philly. He's going to run all mm-hmm. over them twice. So that'll be fun to watch. So, yeah, yeah Giants will be at the bottom. Dave will get fired before the end of the year. It'll be a whole Which mess. Is sad, and, and, bro, because I think he's actually I'm, a really good coach. I just think it was the ownership overstepping and yep. making him and everybody keep Daniel Jones. Yeah. So. Yep, bad decisions up top. I mean, he's the guy who has to, you know, make everything. And you would hope they'd give him the ingredients he's asking for, but that's not always how it works. So that's I mean, how I have Josh it lining Allen. up, sir. I like it. I like, yeah. your, I like your pick. I mean, Josh Allen, right? Real quick, cap side note. He's not bad now, but he was no. on a trajectory to be one of if he like it's him and Patrick Mahomes. That's basically what it was, right? Yeah. It was like, which one do you want? Any given Sunday, one might be better. Every, Patrick always had the slight advantage, right? Because of a couple Super Bowls and – but but ever since Daybolt left, bro, Josh has basically returned to mediocrity. Um, I'm not saying he can't come back out of it. I'm just that's more of a a, a pro to Dable than it is a knock on Allen. Um, yeah. So I, I just think Dable's a pretty good coach, especially for a quarterback. So if Daniel Jones can't figure it out, then Daniel Jones just isn't an NFL quarterback in the nicest way. Neither am I. So it's not really you know I'm not knocking the guy. It's just the uh, yeah, it is what it is. Numbers are what they are. 
exactly exactly so okay so i'm obviously on board with you for the uh first of all you spelled eagles right remember that one meme where the e-l-l-g-l-s <laughs> you should have done yeah. that, that been <laughs> i'm not gonna lie i did have it on the screen in front of me just in case i messed it up because i was like i better not screw this up and look like that idiot <laughs> on youtube where she was spelling a-j-l yes yeah i was like oh god eagles you're like what so Art's going to be happy with both of us. Art, shout out to Art. Uh, Eagles, I, I agree, are taking this division. No team has won it in a row for 20-something years, I believe. I'd have to go back to check, but I believe it's in the 20s. You're right. It's over 20 uh, for sure. Yeah, and so the, the Cowboys aren't going to do it again. You could say the Commanders might sneak one out, but not with this stacked Eagles team. The Eagles are too talented, even if there's a little bit of chaos in the background. The Eagles are too talented to really kind of not be good. So I'm taking the Eagles, however. However, I'm I'm sleeping on these Cowboys, bro. The, I know they wow. just signed Dalvin Cook, but they basically, you know that commercial where Dan Marino and Emmett Smith and Randy Moss come back? <laughs> That's yeah. kind of how I feel about the running back room in Dallas. Not the whole team, just the running back room. I know, but yeah, you know, you know it's I mean? pretty bad. Like, oh, they got Dalvin Cook. Yeah, Dalvin Cook was good in 2017. You know what I mean? That was, was one of the best back. Yeah, Zeke oh, they got Zeke really Elliott good. back, though. They got Elliott back. Oh, uh, right. He was really good in 2015, I think that was. Like, yeah. bro, like, come yeah. on, man. And that's not just shots at them as people, obviously. It's just where their careers are. The running back position yeah. doesn't last that long, especially when you run the way Zeke and um, Dalvin Cook run, which is through motherfuckers. So mm. um, I, I actually don't have them. I think the, the, the contract crap in Dallas for CD, Dak, and – well, CDs is handled, but now Dak and Micah Parsons bringing Zeke back to a questionable running room and then just signing old Dalvin Cook, who did absolutely nothing in New York last year or – Minnesota, no, that's he left Minnesota for a year. Um, New York, yeah, kind of a downgrade on defensive coordinator, at least in my position. I know that not the players on the mm-hmm. field, but Deron Bland's out six to eight weeks with an injury, uh, which is depending on if you think Diggs, Trayvon Diggs, is one of your best, you know, deep uh, DBs, then you lost your either first or second best DB. Mike Zimmer is the new coach for the defense. I don't think he's as good as uh, who's the guy who just went to. Dan Quinn. Commanders. Dan Quinn, yeah, who is now in charge of the Commanders. I just think Jaden Daniels has a I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that Jaden Daniels has a CJ Stroud like start. Um oh, the offensive coordinator okay. is 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 pro pass. Uh CJ or CJ Stroud. See, I'm already comparison. TJ uh <laughs> or what's his name? Jaden Daniels. Jayden. I was like, TJ Dan, what am I saying? Jaden Daniels, I believe, is that really good, talented, deep, uh, a dual threat quarterback. And I think that uh, I think the commanders are going to do something crazy. I don't think they're going to do much beyond maybe sneak into the wild card position, but I think they're going to okay. jump the Cowboys. I'm going crazy. I'm going to go Eagles, Commanders, Cowboys, and then of course uh, Giants suck. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, commanders yeah, up commanders, in Cowboys, Cowboys, right? yeah, I'm I'm trying to be I'm trying to be a little different here. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, I mean, like I said, I'm excited about their their future moving forward. So, like, I would love it if somehow they were able to jump and get into second and drop the Cowboys out of the playoff chase. That'd be great. I know. Then we don't have to hear the Cowboys say, "Don't worry, we're gonna get this one," and they get blown out by yeah. freaking Green Bay at home. You know what I mean? <laughs> or they, or you know, be great is that they end up having to play the Commanders in the first round as a wild card, and the Commanders beat the crap out of them. That would be great. I would love because <laughs> then Quinn gets to beat him. Oh, that would be awesome. Right. I mean, I doubt three NFC East teams make it to the playoffs, but I see your point. Yeah. Although NFC is yeah. kind of weak, it's not impossible. It's not impossible. Yeah, exactly. All right, getting out of the least coast, let's go to the best coast. You already Ooh, know. Boo. NFC West. Um. I'll start because uh, it's the division that my team likes to anchor. This you know is all I mean? you, man. <laughs> yeah, we anchor this. We are the rock solid bottom of this division. Let me tell you, we are. Mm, we got this yeah. division anchored down. So I'm gonna start with the obvious: Cardinals winning the division. No, I'm just kidding. It's obviously gonna be the Niners, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason uh, why they are yeah. favored to go and also to win the Super Bowl again for like. Oh, the they're third, underdogs again in a row. Yeah, they're underdogs, right? Against all odds. Oh. Sorry, against all odds. Oh yeah. That's- uh, the Niners are so stacked that's honestly almost unfair. I don't mean it in the sense like I'm crying unfair. I just mean in the sense like how the fuck do they get the salary cap to do that besides obviously playing, yes. paying Brock Purdy absolutely nothing. Uh, but it is what it is. Yeah. San Fran takes this division for the third straight year. I do believe the Rams are going to give them uh, kind of like a run for their money. Uh, but I think they ultimately fall short by, by a couple games too. More like a 12-5 and five and a 10-7. and seven. I don't think it's like a, a one-game split. I think, it, I think they'll take it by two. Um, but the Rams are like a really young team besides like Stafford yeah. and a few others like Cup and stuff. So I do think that's what is both for and against them. I think they – like last year they had like 
whatever, man, we're young. We're just going to go out there and get it. Uh, and they did pretty well. And now they have a little bit of experience. Puka's second year. Uh, Stafford's fully healthy. Kyron Williams hopefully playing a full season. He's fully healthy. So I think they have a lot of weapons. Um, Seahawks can stick around for a little bit. But ultimately, you know, Gino, no offense. Gino ain't the best quarterback in this division. In fact, just because my team's the worst doesn't mean we have the worst quarterback. I would put Kyler above Gino uh, as far as this division yeah. ranking goes. Um, sure. Obviously, to me, it's Stafford, Purdy, Kyler, Gino. Uh, as much yep. as I don't like giving Purdy props, I'll, yeah, it is what it is. Cards, well, ha, um, you know, getting talented, <laughs> trying to grow, see where the next few years take us. But it ain't this year, though. So Niners, Rams, Seahawks, Cardinals. Niners, Rams, Seahawks, Cardinals. All right, that sounds good because that's what I have as well, sir. I, can't right. really... I was like, well, what do you about you, man? <laughs> I can't really argue any of the points you said. Like the Niners are above and beyond the best on paper on the field. As long as they don't lose, you know, any major weapons, they're going to be the best team in the division by far, if not the whole NFC, to be honest. Um, and then I'm with you. The Rams are really good. They're coming off of a last of last year's wild card spot that nobody really expected, especially after they started, I think, three and six. Um, but I, I'm with you. I think of a healthy Matthew Stafford, a bigger, bulkier offensive line. They went out and re, kind of redid their uh, philosophy as far as the offense and how they're going to run the offensive line and and building a, a wall for Kyron Williams, who you mentioned. They also have Blake Corum, who they drafted out of Michigan. So there's a lot of uh, options there on the on the offensive side. The question is the defense, because like you said, yeah. they're very young. They did good last year, but sometimes youth can hurt you as well. Lost their uh, and then the whole and then trading their quarterback or their middle linebacker uh, yesterday to the Titans out of nowhere, uh, who was their Mike yeah, guy. So now they're a leader on their weird, defense. Dude. So I don't I don't know if you saw the clip of Sean McVay getting asked about it. He was very testy, which is not like him. So something weird went down. I don't know what, but as a Titans fan, I'll take the linebacker for a year. Oh, that's so good for you, you, bro. He was good. Uh, <laughs> Um, so the Rams a little questionable on the defense, you know, no Aaron Donald, does he come back? Does he not? If they have a chance, will he? Cause he's still hanging around his locker still in the locker room. It's very weird. Um, but I'm with you then beyond that Seahawks and eh, Geno Smith's whatever. They'll be fine. New coach, defensive coordinator. So the defense will probably get better. The offense will just be average. And then the Cardinals I'm with you. They're building, they're learning. They got Marvin Harrison jr. Who's exciting. Uh, you know, Kyler Murray, if he's healthy, can obviously do a lot with that weapon. Um, and then that's kind of how it all wraps up. (laughs) I mean, I was going to be like, then they have, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Unfortunately, (laughs) it's fine. It's cool. It's cool. It's fine. I understand it. Uh, But yeah, it's hard to argue the order that you had there. All right. Nice. Nice. Yep. Yeah. That's, uh, that's the NFC as we see it. Please let us know down below. Um, in the comments, who you've got winning each NFC division? I believe I think I'm going to let me know, Corey. Corey I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna do a parlay on all eight divisions, uh, including the AFC, which is coming up in the next episode. So I think I'm gonna do division yeah. winners, not not order, just the winners. Yeah, that sounds good. You down? Okay. Let us know in the comments who you've got winning each uh, NFC division down below. We'd love to talk to you about it. See where you guys stand. Tell us where we're right. Tell us where we're wrong. You know, give us some stats that. Uh, Show that you're right. Don't just say, you know, you're wrong because I'm a fan of this team. That's, that's, that's <laughs> But that's the fact for that person. <laughs> yeah, but that's a count, Corey. Hey. <laughs> Jeez. So, anyways, uh, everybody, thank you all for stopping by. As always, seeing things from our view from the bench, I'm Brendan. And I'm Corey. Like we always say, enjoy the sports until we talk again. Peace. This was a Sycamore 4th Studios production.